Okay, so today's printer is a Canon MB2160. I got this for a whole dollar off the local auction site and it's out of inks so the owner didn't want it and uh, it is with all the printers that I do the inks cost more than um, the printer so you might as well just get a new printer with new features than have this big chunk of plastic sitting in your your office right so this one has got an extra bonus feature if it um, if it doesn't have any inks it won't do anything it just does nothing it just says the inks have run out you can't do a single thing in fact this is just only run out of color ink so it could actually print black and white but it won't you can't not only can you not even print black and white you can't scan it's a brick and if you wanted to unbrick it you have to spend something like $160, $140 for inks to get it going. So it's it's obscene, right? So this, I don't begrudge the owner of this printer at all. It just makes perfect economic sense. Get rid of this printer, get a new one of new features. Probably cost, cost half as much. We'll go over this one, and before we pull it apart, I've not looked at it, it says it's got fax memory, so I'm not sure it's got a fax in it, or it's using internet fax. Something I brought out just for the complete death of fax. Um, paper tray. It's like 250 sheets, maybe. Prints come at the front. Paints go in the front here. This one is in a thermal front head one, so I'll give it that credit. It's got the individual ink cartridges. And these ones look like they're the, the ones that came with the machines. So brought one set of inks for this printer, well, the inks that came with the printer, and then we're going to throw it away. Uh, so we'll have a look around the back and see what there is. And it does indeed have a fax line, USB printing, and I don't think it's got any networking. I can't check the control panel to see if there's any networking because it won't let me do anything because it's bricked. So it's got a document handle on the top which you can't use anymore and a scanner and unfortunately it's got a just a linear DC motor for the scanner not a separate motor so obviously the price point between memory and processor power and motors has got to that point where it's actually the memory is cheaper than buying a stepper motor. So we'll start to disassemble it. I've not seen this, um, this printer before. So I can see there's two screws here which would be a good starting point. And some on the front so we'll get those off and see what it leaves us.
<coughs> so there's two in the front, two in the back, and um, just these little clipping places underneath to unclip it. It's a printer control board, pretty unsensational, looks pretty bored, must be all on the other side, maybe. And it looks like a little bit of Wi Fi chip. It says YLAN module, so we might be able to use this as a USB key or USB dongle Wi Fi adapter. Typical timing wheel we see in these ones. It's got uh, just very fine black lines in the little encoder here, so it keeps the paper speed going through correctly. Interestingly, wrap wires around everything rather than use cable ties to cut down a bit of cost. Just got a little speaker here.
that is a huge motor. It is about the size of a 540. Yeah, this is the last biggest motor. That was out of a brother, I think. And it's way bigger than that. So it's a beefy motor, and it's got a beefy belt on it. So there's probably must be a lot going on in there. I think the best plan of attack is to pull the top off and then we can have a look down from the top.
get that top off without breaking the glass. So I'll come back to that later. So here's our ink system. Oh, empty. Flex got a little bit left in it, but of course, doesn't matter. A little timing belt, so we're just going this way, <clears throat> getting its timing, and of course the little blender in the end gets the paper feed timer right. Here's our printed system. This will be the color ones. This will probably be black, so it probably prints black twice, twice as fast as color. About to get the cost down on printing it, not having long color heads. They're a little bit shorter. Lots of uh, beefy springs in there for something. for a feed-in sensor, but I've got no idea where that sensor's gone. Maybe it's on the bottom of the document handle. Yep. It's mystery. I'll have to watch the tape back.
person who this is a substantial waste tank but there's not a lot in there which goes to show this machine probably used one set of inks before it got terminated So high expectation of wasted ink here. And it keeps going. And going. And going. Yeah. Sort of tiny pump. That is a decent belt. It's also pulling a lot of weight.
This is ginormous motor. Really thin wires on it there. So maybe it's um, not too high power. Yeah, tension spring. Wicked. I don't know if any person ever met as a user. You never would.
It's weird, it's oily. Maybe it was just to get some rollers. Sure, you can see it. There's moisture here. I'm not sure what they're talking about. Well, that's the paper feed sensor. Perhaps it works with cahoots or the one on the top, but I'm not sure. And some feeder rollers. Kind of ribbon. It's weird.
the motor. Just this have strange looking connector on it. Seems an expensive way to do that, maybe there's a reason. Mm. Power supply drops in the bottom. Easy to do with the factory, I suppose. Voltage is 32 and 32, both 0.45 of an amp. The noise you can hear is the cat on my roof.
There's no shortage of wadding. Well, I guess it is a cannon, so. Pretty, yeah. pretty elaborate sort of pumping system and it's all these hoses and things. We can't do anything with it because it's just going to be full of ink. Probably get that motor off. Timing <clears throat> sensor for this pump. Interesting.
since up. So it's the bottom half then, so we'll get to the top half. Uh, I think I've got everything on th off there. This is just a lot of styrene, so whether we can do anything with it or not, let's hope we can.
see a little screen. I don't think I'm going to do much with that. It doesn't have a very friendly connector at all. Yeah, be a bit of a nightmare, but I'll hold on to it. You never know. If they can see that number.
try this. A tiny little guide early. That's about it really. My battery's about to die so I'll um, get all the bits together and we'll see what we come back with. Here's just all this wiring in the front there. This is the switch in the front, but aside from that, it's done. Okay, so here's our loot. Um, a bunch of optical sensors, the screen, which we probably don't have anything useful, usual bunch of screws, ton of springs, USB plug, lots of chokes, and the speaker, the control board, uh, the fax interface line, some sort of power distribution board, belts, CIS sensor, um, I think we figured out in an earlier video those runs off 24 volts, so we probably won't play with that. Power supply, uh, metal, which can go straight to recycling. I don't remember pulling six motors out of this machine, but looks like there is six motors in this machine. A Wi-Fi module, so we'll check out my other channel if you want to see if I get this up and going. I've seen these pretty easily just connected wired up to a USB plug, and they turn into a Wi-Fi module for your uh, PC or whatever. And of course, the Plastic of the Year award goes to this printer. If you want to see what the last printer looked like that I pulled apart, click here. If you want to make sure you don't miss the next one I pull apart, click here.